Scariest Paranormal Encounter While at Work? I work in a large four-story office building that has a warehouse that is half the entire building. At the time, the warehouse was empty and me and a few guys were refinishing the concrete floor. We were going to be grinding on the floor that day, so we decided to go in and grind at 3 a.m. We didn't want to disturb the office people with noise. Anyhow, I show up at about 2.45 a.m. It's a very secure facility. I have to use a badge and type a security code to get in the door. I turn on the lights in the warehouse and start rolling out extension cords when I hear voices from down the hallway towards the first floor elevator. The warehouse echoes bad because the ceiling is 60 feet high, so I couldn't make out what they were saying. The voices were having a conversation that lasted until I started my floor grinder. I just assumed it was a graveyard cleaning crew. Later that day, I see the maintenance guy and I ask how early the cleaning crew comes in. They clean during the day on the weekends. He says. Well, someone was here when I got here at 2.45 a.m. I say. When you use your badge, it logs in a computer and he can see who's been going through what door at any time he's telling me. So we go to his computer and check. Last log of the day before. Him leaving around 6 p.m. First log of that day. Me at 2.45 a.m. I work in a bakery and usually start work around 12 to 2 a.m. I'm the first one to enter the shop, however, my boss would occasionally start before me and clean up so she wouldn't get in the way of production. I got to work and turned on the oven's fryers and heard a loud bang at the back of the bakery around the corner where the fridge freezers are. It sounded as if someone had thrown all the packaging from the shelves onto the ground. I went to check thinking that my boss was there. I took one step and a mixing bowl on its stand just slowly rolled around the corner and into the middle of the bakery. This mixing bowl is heavy and there aren't any windows for breeze to come through. Not that any wind would have been able to push that thing anyway. I froze not really knowing what to think and I called my boss's name, but I heard nothing. I was so spooked, so I went to look around the corner and nothing was there. No packaging on the floor and no one to push the mixing bowl across the floor. Oh man, I had to just start work and pretend like everything was all good, low-key freaking out for the first few hours until someone else arrived. The main lights are off in the shop when I first come in, and only the bakery is lit up. Sometimes it looks like someone is running between the aisles of the shop from the corner of your eye, and if you look down where it's dimly lit, it's such a weird feeling I can't describe it, just makes you want to look away. I work as a handyman for a small real estate company. They have apartments and houses we take care of and manage. Our cleaning guy for our office took a vacation, so they had me cleaning at night. No big deal. Well, one day I had my music playing downstairs in the washroom next to the restrooms. For some reason, I went upstairs and I heard my boss's wife call out and said hi in my name. I headed back down the hallway towards the stairs to lower my music. Went downstairs and no one was there. Called my boss and asked if they were in the building. They said they were home. Of course. Okay. Kind of freaked out. Thought what the hell and decided to check the cameras. Two ladies leaving an office late downstairs around the time I heard my name being called. Feeling a little relieved. Watched the cameras again and realized the timing was way off. Like 10 seconds off. When I turned to say hi back and when the workers opened the door to leave their office. I nope out of that right away. It called my name. And my boss's wife's voice. That place was built on an old motel where a lot of murder and lonely death misery took place. I started cleaning way earlier. Later, my boss's sister found an old Ouija board behind our dumpsters. I used to work at a bank that we all agreed had its spooky moments. Typical stuff like you feel like you're being watched in certain areas, stuff falling off shelves randomly, my coworker constantly thinks someone is saying her name behind her, that kind of stuff. It was a very small bank and on Saturdays, we would have one personal banker, one teller, and one police officer work during the few hours we were open. One day while I was working as a teller, and there were two full-grown men working with me. I happened to go to the bathroom during the incident and only found out what happened when the police officer refused to sit in his designated spot. Apparently, the police officer was speaking with the banker about paranormal stuff happening in the bank when they heard three distinct loud knocks on the desk where the officer sits. It wasn't much, but the officer refused to go back to his desk and for some reason, I find it spookier when a police officer is too scared to do his job properly.
My wife worked night shift at a Ross in Radford and said on a few occasions, the doors would mysteriously open, and it sounded like someone was walking into the store when there was nobody there. She said one night after they locked up, the motion sensor theft system went off and was detecting movement in the store from the front door going towards the back. Police were called out and nothing was amiss, but security camera captured a weird shadow mist moving through the store when the alarms went off. Now, I was working as a fire safety advisor for a local fire department on a location movie shoot. That in the building itself is the Woodbury House in Altadena, California. Part of my responsibility is to ensure site safety, electrical safety, and workplace safety. One of the duties I do is to perform a site survey and walk the entire perimeter and assess the contents of the house itself to see if there's any potential issues that would cause an injury. There was a very heavy feeling from the time that I got to the house. Mind you, I'm not sensitive and I don't project myself as being sensitive to feeling dead people around me. I started in the basement which is very creepy and has a narrow stone lot and pathway that curves to the left all the way down a full story with a dirt bottom floor. I then made my way up to the various stories of the house via the stairs. Which there were a total of three occupied floors and the attic made it four floors. While I was making my way up the stairs to the attic, I could immediately sense that something was watching me. As I came around the first turn to enter the attic through a door, this is a fully upright attic that you could walk through with floors and everything, I saw right in front of me, a smallish shadow figure about waist high dart across on the farthest wall of the house, going from my right to my left. The movement was so fleeting that before I had realized what I just saw. It was gone. I immediately felt lightheaded and told myself I needed to get some air. I had also came to the conclusion to keep this incident to myself. I mean, people look up to me as a technical advisor for scene safety. They don't need to believe I have lost a screw somewhere by seeing ghosts or shadows. I made it outside finally and took a long deep breath. Whew. I said. That was heavy. Two women, makeup artists, I think, were talking on an adjacent wall. Their attention was drawn to me and one queried. Wow. You look as though you just saw a ghost. I couldn't deny it. I replied. Yes, I think one ran right in front of me up in the attic. They both looked at each other, then the house, and then me again in astonished fear. They said nothing more. But they fully believed what I had experienced. Well, I thought. Dodged a bullet there, I said. Nor was I asked about the shadow, kid I thought because of the height, figure by anyone else that day. The owner Kay had shared with me some of unexplained happenings that occurred in the house. For example, there was a housekeeping crew that came in, and they would routinely hear the vacuum go off and on and remove. They also would hear footsteps and the sounds of like people moving around on the floor above them. When I was walking around with the owner, I noticed two items that of immediate concern to me. The first one was a Ouija board that she had laid it out on a table in and later added multi-purpose room towards the front of the house. I asked her where she got this from and she told me that she picked it up at an antique store locally. I told her to return it immediately to that antique store. The only way that you can get rid of the Ouija board is to have somebody else accept the board from you. I told her that would probably help her with a lot of the activity that's in the house right now, because there may be attached energy to the board. Usually bad. The next item was towards the back of the house in a laundry type room. I observed a photograph of the original owner. Now I don't cast aspersions to people that are dead. However, this person looked like the meanest angriest person in the world. And you can be sure he does not like all these people walking through his house. I told her to get rid of it or to remove the picture to the outside and burn it or throw it away. And she did just that. Immediately it was evident that this owner didn't know what she was dealing with. This is one of the original houses in the neighborhood that we were filming at and it had been here for over 100 years. The original owner I'm sure, was responsible for some of the ongoings that was happening at the house that included scaring people, the noises upstairs, and the activity with the vacuum. It was learned later that his wife's mother lived and died in one of the most active rooms on the second floor. The house was recently featured on Ghost Adventures with Zach Bagans. The Woodbury House and Zach said that it was the most activity that he had seen. In fact, before they had even set up, they actually captured something outside which was a first for them. I tried to do an investigation one time, but the owner refused me access to it. So that's my story and nothing more happened, and nothing followed me home thank goodness. I was working in Kuwait on an old military base about 20 miles outside of Iraq. The base had been overrun by Iraq during the first Gulf War. I'm not sure how many died. 
All around the base, there were these small buildings that we worked out of from time to time, I was an aviation mechanic. Our particular location was really secluded and quiet, and at times, I would be the only one there. One night, my crew loaded up and went to get food. I had to stay behind as I was in the middle of a job. While working, I heard something that sounded like footsteps in the sand behind me, imagine Kuwait desert like a beach with no water. So I turn around, thinking one of my crew is back, forget something? And I turn around to nothing. I shake it off and continue to work. Few minutes later, I heard movement in the sand again, but this time it sounded like running, and I instantly think my crew is messing with me, so I turn around expecting to get tackled or be put in a headlock, as we would always mess around like that, but I turned around to nothing. Not much I could do but run into the hangar. When the crew returned with food, I told them what happened. They called me crazy and we laughed it off. Few nights later, same type of situation but I wasn't alone, my supervisor was with me, and we both heard running footsteps, only this time we heard screams coming from the direction of the hangar. We knew for a fact that we were the only ones there. Through our time there, we all began to experience similar situations. Most common would be the footsteps running in the sand, our names being called by no one in the screams. Once my supervisor was listening on the radio for our plane to land and suddenly heard a woman crying, he threw the headset down and ran over to me to tell me, dude, I think I'm losing my mind. I remember him being pale-faced and frightened. Mind you, he was not the type to admit being scared. We didn't tell anyone about it. About a week later in our office, our logistics clerk was on the phone ordering parts, and she suddenly screamed and chucked the phone, WTF, there's a lady crying on the phone. My supervisor looked at me and he went on to tell her what he had heard on the radio. We didn't really know how to react, tbh, I think we were relieved that we weren't going crazy, and it was happening to everyone. I have shared a lot of paranormal stories on here about my time at summer camp and the ghosts associated with those. This one is more recent. Last year, I worked overnight shifts at a homeless shelter. This one was a little isolated and had some really tall creepy trees around it. I had been working at this shelter for a few months, and nothing creepy had happened until one night. I was looking at the security cameras, and something caught my eye on the camera facing the back outside. I caught the last few seconds of something dashing off camera. It was big and lanky and its proportions were wrong. Long arms, long legs, small torso, large head and ears. We are supposed to do property checks every hour and go out and go around the grounds and check. No one did them. Our boss the next morning didn't ask questions. The staff replacing us didn't ask questions. This would happen every so often. Someone would see or hear something. Some of my coworkers won't do the property checks at all and would have another person do it or do it together. They never talked about it. I worked one summer while doing college for a local historic landmark, the oldest street in the US in New Paltz, New York as a tour guide. Some of the houses went back a good 300 years, one converted to a Victorian mansion in the 1800s. The location has a lot of ghost stories they tell you for the Halloween tours about stuff like a man in a black cape and top hat with a dog and black coaches. The Victorian house is supposed to be haunted by the daughter of the family that lived there in the late 1800s, who makes her painting fall off the wall. I've often been the one going in the houses as we're closing up to make sure no one's in there and they get locked, there's been issues with people sneaking in and hiding to steal artifacts, and generally would have a weird feeling or feel like I'm being watched, particularly in the Victorian house and another two-story house. In the Victorian house, I've seen the spinning wheel set up in the sitting room start turning and caught a skirt darting upstairs out of the corner of my eye a few times, but the freakiest one was in the other two-story house. I went in to check for stragglers and heard footsteps, and someone speaking on the floor above, ran up the stairs to catch whoever it was, just to hear footsteps running downstairs. I run down the one and only staircase, just to see no one downstairs, but footsteps and murmuring upstairs again in the same room I had just left. I go back up, and nothing, check every room, every closet, and no one. Then I hear the footsteps downstairs again. At this point I just say, that's it, I'm going home now. You have fun then. And kid you not, heard a chuckle in the room with me. I didn't really run out, just walked, very quickly. I've locked up a few other times since, but never really had another experience like that in that house. I worked at a bank for a few years as a teller in high school. The building was over 100 years old too, which is part of what made it so creepy. The basement was basically an abandoned office space, and the lights were almost always off. 
Many times, lights would flick on and off down there, and curtains to the offices would move. The worst, though, was when you were in there alone. I'd have to open the bank by myself on Saturday mornings before anyone else came in. And I just worked in the drive through so on the complete other side of the bank lobby was the other teller stations with super heavy doors that locked automatically. On countless occasions, those doors would slam shut, loudly. And I could often hear humming and whistling, and the music would randomly turn on. I'd also seen shadow figures walking through offices and behind the teller lines. I don't know if I was more scared of it being an actual person in the bank or something paranormal. But it even happened when co-workers were around, and we'd both go looking around to see what or who made the noise, and nothing was ever there. I work in an office where anybody who stays late hears a lot of odd noises, like the closing of doors when no one's around or shuffling of feet on the carpet. One night, I had to go back into work at almost 1 a.m. because I had left behind something I really needed. There wasn't a car anywhere in the parking lot, and the building was completely deserted. After I grabbed my item, I decided to use the restroom which is down the hallway outside of our office. While I was drying my hands, I heard the distinct sound of one of those large trash cans the cleaning service uses being rolled down the hallway and stopping right outside the bathroom door. I was surprised that the cleaning staff had come in that time of night and stood there for a minute waiting for the door to open. When no one entered, I went out into the hallway to find the building still completely deserted, and when I left, there were still no cars in the lot. I used to work in a museum that was based within a really beautiful old house. First day on the job, my colleague starts telling me about the place etc. Then he says, in winter time when you're opening up the building, start with this room first, it's the worst one. Me, thinking he meant because the keys were difficult to get in the lock or something, oh yeah? Coworker, that's where the shadow is. I had a tingle spread right down my spine at that point. He continued to tell me that during morning hours especially in winter, there is a black shadow, shapeless, that just appears in the room on occasion. I personally never saw it. Another museum I worked in was based in an old courthouse and had a tower room where they would put on exhibitions. I could never be in that room alone. I remember the first time I went in there. Stopped in to have a look at the exhibit and familiarize myself with it and all of a sudden, I had this feeling that I just had to leave. Proper fight or flight and every instinct in my body told me to nope the fleeb out of there.